If you have not seen this viral Italian coffee cream drink, you live under a bigger rock than me, which honestly is impressive because my friends tell me I know very little about pop culture. But every time I see one of these videos making this drink, I think I have to, I have to make a reaction video explaining the food science on why this works. And this drink is super interesting. There's only three ingredients and each plays such a essential role in forming this like foamy, creamy coffee drink in the end. Plus, I mean, I wanted to try the drink. The plan is let's follow along with some of these popular videos and when I have something sciencey to add, I'll sort of pause it and pipe in. Have you ever tried crema de cafe? It's Italian coffee cream and it's insanely good. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make it with just a plastic mm. bottle. First, grab an espresso shot or coffee from a mocha pot and add a few spoons of powdered sugar. And you need to make sure this coffee is cold or it can split the cream. Then, pause. Okay, there's already so much science here, I'm getting like a little excited. We need to talk about powdered sugar because this is used for a very specific reason. Now, powdered sugar is simply table sugar but to beat into like pulverized to like a very small particle size. Now, powdered sugar and table sugar, they're really sucrose. Like to me as a scientist, I call them sucrose because it's a specific sugar. Although one time at the dinner table, I did accidentally say, can you pass the sucrose? And my family thought that was absolutely hilarious when I thought it was just being specific. But powdered sugar is sucrose in these tiny, tiny particles, which are actually quite prone to clumping. So to prevent this clumping, actually about like 3% of powdered sugar is corn starch. It stops those particles from agglomerating, making these big clumps. So what's great about powdered sugar in this drink is we add two ingredients, sucrose and corn starch, both of which are used to increase the viscosity or make that uh, coffee liquid thicker. And this is really key later on in the video. We're going to go back to why you need to make this coffee liquid thicker. Second, did you notice he mentioned that you have to use cold coffee? You cannot use warm coffee because the right microstructure is not able to form. And this comes back to one of the ingredients, specifically cream. And cream itself is an emulsion. It's actually pretty interesting. So cream under a microscope, what you would see is these tiny fat globules, sort of tiny oil droplets, all held within a broader water phase. These fat globules at cool or refrigeration temperatures, they are actually part liquid oil and part solid fat. So the issue if you use warm or hot espresso is that you melt that solid fat to make these totally liquid oil droplets. And if you do that, you cannot form the right microstructure. You will not get this foamy coffee drink in the end, which we'll come back to this point later in the video. Let's watch what's next. Then add it to your leftover bottle and half fill the bottle with cream, leaving enough room for the cream to whip. Mm -hmm. And then you just gotta shake. I'm not doing this on the internet. Once you hear it change from sloshing to slapping, you're good to go. You Stop. So here we are getting to the processing of the drink. And you might not think of it as processing because of course you're just like shaking a plastic soda bottle. But this is a very common step, like in the food industry, we might call it agitation or shearing. It's, you know, a little different, but basically the same, you know, the same step is used to make things like ice cream and whipped cream. In fact, one of my first videos on this channel, like from a couple of years ago, was showing you how you can shake cream to make whipped cream. And if you keep shaking it, you can actually make butter. I mean, I'm like a little baby here, a little YouTube baby. And you know, since I filmed this video, I actually moved to Europe, but then also moved from Europe back to the US. So time has absolutely flown by. But what we're doing on this microscopic level, like what we're doing to the food and to these ingredients is we're changing the structure or building structure in two different ways. 
Number one is that we're adding air bubbles to the drink. And how we do this? Well, half that plastic bottle is left empty on purpose so that as we shake or whip that drink, that air slowly actually gets incorporated into the beverage. Some of those air bubbles get stuck in that drink. And this happens because remember, we added that powdered sugar, which is really sugar and cornstarch, both of which help increase the thickness of that coffee liquid. It makes it more viscous. And when something is more viscous, it's much harder for these air bubbles to escape. I, sometimes I would think about it like it's very easy for us to swim through water, but what if the water was like jello or something more thick? It would be much more difficult for us to try and make our way through that jello and try to get out. This really helps build that volume by trapping in those air bubbles and makes the final drink feel so light and airy in our mouth. And let me tell you, food companies love incorporating air into products, say like Cheetos or ice cream, because you know what? Air is a free ingredient. The second way we're building a structure by just simply shaking that plastic bottle is that this action of like shearing or mixing is building a fat network. And funny enough, this is actually what I studied during my PhD because this is a very common phenomenon in something like ice cream and whipped topping, a lot of different dairy products. Now remember, I said it's absolutely key that you use cold coffee or cold espresso and literally every video I've seen on this drink says the same thing and here's why. If you use warm coffee, remember you melt that solid fat in the cream to liquid oil and here's where that becomes very important. As we're shaking that drink in the soda bottle, those fat globules, they start flying around, thrashing around. And when they're moving this fast, sometimes they run into each other. But because part of each fat globule is solid fat, they can't fully merge with one another. Instead, they, go, they undergo something called partial coalescence or they're only partially merged and this is what builds the structure in the final drink. It might help to think about it like this. Say you have two totally liquid oil droplets. If they run into each other, what happens? They just merge together and make one larger spherical droplet. Well, that would be terrible for this drink because like the man says here, you would just get oiling off. All that liquid oil would just merge with one another and make this totally separate oil phase. It would not be good. But if you have a fat globule that is partially oil and partially solid fat, what happens when two of these fat globules come into contact is they can only partly merge, right? The solid fat sort of gets in the way of them merging. This is what we call partial coalescence. Now imagine this happens to thousands of these tiny fat globules. They all just partially merge. What ends up happening is you make a huge extensive fat network, which is shown in this picture I took during my PhD. This was just under a microscope. You can see all the individual fat globules are now all partially merged or partially coalesced. And this type of fat network is super strong. It can hold in air bubbles. It can hold in a viscous liquid. It's this fat network that gives a product like stand up properties so it doesn't collapse against gravity. If I could look at this under a microscope, what I would expect to see is these tiny air bubbles that are held in not only by that viscous coffee liquid, but also stabilized by these fat globules that are all partially coalesced or partially merged together. And this fat network probably runs throughout the entire structure, not just around those air bubbles, because it also needs to hold in the rest of that viscous coffee liquid. This means Italian coffee cream is both a foam and an emulsion. Another way to say that is it's an aerated emulsion, very similar to something like whipped cream or ice cream. And this is how I tend to see food as a food scientist. Every single ingredient plays a very specific role to make the final product. And this final product doesn't taste too bad. 
If you enjoyed this video, next I would check out the video where I break down the science behind ice cream.